hello, Teddy. Can you say hello to your friends? You want to tell them what you did today? Aside from take 14 naps? Can we talk about term life insurance? Are you interested in that? No? All right. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and I make videos about health and fitness and all of those things, endurance sports. So if you're one of those types that hears people talk about the keto diet and you think to yourself, suckers, all while you lovingly embrace your carbohydrates, you've come to the right place and you should hit all of those buttons down below. But today's video, we are talking about Zwift Academy workout number six, the third and final workout in block number two, and the final workout that is required for you to graduate from Zwift Academy. This workout is called FTP Boost. A goofy name yet again, because I'm pretty sure that's what all three of the workouts in this particular block are intended to do. But let's talk more specifically about the particular targets of this workout. And we've talked about all of these elements in the past during the series. We've talked about things like fatigue resistance, lactate tolerance, obviously FTP boosting, muscular endurance. We're targeting all of these things in this particular workout. Now you will see similar workouts very often out there, whether you use Trainer Road, if you use Ruby, if you buy a training plan off of Training Peaks, and I'm sure you can find several of them right here on Zwift. But these workouts are structured in such a way where you will start an interval with a very high execution of power. Usually at minimum, it's a very high level of VO2 max and more often it's in your anaerobic range. And that's between maybe 15 and 45 seconds. And that interval immediately gives way to a sustained effort high sweet spot or more often in your threshold range. And those can go anywhere from five minutes, even upwards of 15 to 20 minutes. And what these workouts are intended to do is to teach you kind of how to settle into a high execution of power when you're not in a particularly optimal state to do so. These workouts are not only intended to raise your FTP, but to do so in a way that's practical to the real world. We see this stuff all the time. Have you ever done a race on Zwift or even a group ride? or a racer group ride out on the real road. These are hard starts very often, right? People take off in pretty much of a sprint and then they settle into a high execution of power, sometimes trying to separate the wheat from the chaff, sometimes trying to make that separation or sometimes just trying to flex on the bike, right? And you do that for a sustained period of time and usually things tend to settle down, but you'll see that very often. Or have you ever been at the bottom of a hill and you realize that you weren't paying attention and you were over geared and you have to do very high execution of power until you get yourself into the right gear so you can settle in for maybe a threshold hold level effort up the climb, or maybe you've attacked or tried to make a breakaway. If you've ever seen over the top of the hill, somebody kind of attacks and then tries to make a gap and stay away. Same type of structure, right? Very high execution of power and immediately settles into something in their FTP zone or a very high percentage of their FTP. So we're practicing a very practical element of real world cycling. And this is going to teach your muscles how to continue to fire when they really want to stop. Because that initial effort of around 30 seconds is really going to build up lactate very quickly. It's going to spike your heart rate. It's fully anaerobic and your muscles are going to be screaming. They're going to start burning pretty readily. The effort is going to be long enough to start to feel that burn. And your muscles are going to want to stop, but you're going to need to continue. You need to continue to maintain a high execution of power and clear that lactate and continue to put Put out that power if you want to keep up with the group or stay away from the group. So workouts like this are intended to help you build that fatigue resistance so you can deal with that burning, to deal with the muscular endurance that you need, and you'll be dealing with building the aerobic engine to be able to handle kind of that, that peak and then settling into that steady state of power. Now this particular workout is structured a little bit differently than what you'll typically see out there. Let me go through the structure and I'll talk about why I think that is. So this workout is structured in a very straightforward way and the first 14 minutes are the same as all of the other workouts we've done so far. You get that progressive 10 minute warm up from 50% of your FTP up to 80% of your FTP, that one minute activation effort that takes you from 80 to a little over 90% of your FTP, and then you get that three minute recovery valley at 55% of your FTP. Then you're going to progress into three identical sets and they're going to go as follows. You're going to have 30 seconds at an anaerobic capacity effort at 160% of your FTP. 
FTP. Then you're going to get a one minute recovery value at 55% of your FTP. This is different than what you'll typically see in these workouts. And I'll talk about why I think that is when we're done going through the structure. After that recovery, you're going to go into a four minute sustained effort at 95% of your FTP. And then you're going to stair step up for another three minutes at 100% of your FTP. So that sustained block is a total of seven minutes where you'll stair step up from your high sweet spot, low threshold into your FTP. Then you're going to get a five minute break at 55% of your FTP. And then you're going to do that again, 30 seconds at 160%, one minute recovery at 55%, four minutes at 95% of your FTP, three minutes at 100% of your FTP, and then another five minute break at 55% of your FTP. You'll do that one more time, and then you'll be given a five minute recovery that grades you down from about 65% of your FTP to about 45% of your FTP. The entire workout is 54 and a half minutes, so I don't know why they couldn't give you another 30 seconds in there. You can ex certainly extend your warm up and your cool down to round out the even 60. And this one has substantially less load than the last one. Uh, you'll get a healthy amount of TSS here between 60 and 66. TSS is pretty typical depending on your adherence to the actual workout. It's a healthy amount for a workout that is sub 60 minutes, but the last workout definitely had a, quite a bit more. It's a higher intensity workout. But let's talk about the difference in this workout, that one minute recovery you get between the 30 seconds and the sustained effort and why those aren't put together. And to be perfectly frank, there is no physiological benefit from a workout perspective to doing that. You don't gain anything in terms of including that rest. There's no reason for it other than adherence. Unless I'm missing something abundantly obvious and somebody can weigh in if they think that I've missed something, but I'm pretty sure that it is to promote adherence to make sure people aren't failing the intervals. And they kind of allude to that if you read between the lines in the workout instruction. They want you to something like finish the interval strong or finish the workout strong. And this workout, I kind of see as a transitional workout. This is one of those that you can do to build yourself up to the more traditional workouts. Because people who have not developed their threshold energy system aren't going to do very well at the, those more traditional hard start intervals. They're going to fail in usually one of two ways. The first way is kind of a fitness or an aerobic failure. And what will happen is you'll hit that first 30 seconds and you're going to spike your heart rate way up. And then you're going to settle into an aerobic zone at your 95% of your FTP, but your heart rate and your breathing won't recover. You'll stay almost pinned because your aerobic system is just not adept at kind of settling in at that lower rate of power. The other thing that will happen is that you'll fail in terms of fatigue resistance or muscular endurance. You'll bake so much burn into the legs in that first 30 seconds that you won't be able to tolerate it when you settle into the steady state and you'll break down either mentally, physically, or even both. So working your way up to those types of workouts with ones like these ones uh, would be very effective, right? If you could do these for a couple of weeks until you can do them repeatedly and I'd say comfortably, but comfortably is kind of a relative term when it comes to threshold level efforts. Then you can kind of move into adjusting into the more traditional efforts. Maybe you reduce that one minute recovery to 30 seconds recovery, or you push those together. Then you move into protracting things out. Maybe you get rid of the stair step, right? Now you go 30 seconds on and you go directly into 100%, or you go to 95% for 12 minutes, right? There's ways to append and augment these workouts to make them more challenging as you progress and periodize your training. But this particular workout, I am pretty convinced, is designed to be a builder of a workout. It's a transitional workout, but this is not the end all be all. When you start to really develop your threshold level system and you say, hey, what's next? What's next is to put this together and move that 30 seconds connected to that sustained effort there. But I think it's a really good idea to do that because separating those two intervals by one minute does not give you the opportunity to fully clear that lactate. It's going to allow your heart rate and your breathing to recover just enough to hit that sustained effort strong, but it's not going to completely eliminate the purpose of the workout. Performing the intervals this way is going to still get you between 70 and 85% of the benefit that you would get if you had connected those intervals together. And 70 to 85% is going to be better than the 20% you're going to get if you fail out early. So this is a really good builder of a workout. I think this workout specifically had that development path in mind, allowing for people from beginner to intermediate to get a benefit from the workout. And people at a more advanced state can still get a benefit from this workout as well. But if you're looking at how you can carry the academy forward down the line, understand that this type of workout can be progressed into more connected intervals. I can't say I have anything terribly original to say about this workout in terms of tips, right? From the last five workouts, I think a lot of what I've said in these workouts carries forward into this one as well. I'll be brief with my remarks on that front, but I, if you haven't seen the past five workouts, I recommend going through and watching those because I talk 
talk a lot about tips that are pervasive for this entire academy. But fueling, very important, right? We're working at a threshold level effort. I struggled today myself. I had a bit of a stomach, I don't know, sour stomach today. I was not really able to take in much food today. I was trying to stay hydrated, but I was both undercarbed and a little underhydrated today. And, and I struggled, I felt it in the muscles. I wanted to get through the workout anyway. I was fresh and I really want to ride outside the next several days. It's going to be uncharacteristically nice for this time of the year. So I wanted to make sure I had this uh, video and this workout in the bank, but be fueled, be hydrated. Same thing I've been saying for all of the other workouts. Uh, cadence, again, talking about giving yourself somewhere to go, right? Starting at a little bit higher of a cadence than you think you wanna be at and letting, your, letting yourself settle in as you start to kind of fatigue and maybe break down a little bit over those seven minutes for the sustained efforts. Keeping control of your form, right? Not lumbering all over the bike and wasting that energy. It's going to be important, especially as you go to the second and third interval where you're going to be baking more fatigue into the legs and things are going to get a little bit harder after each one. When you hit the 30 second efforts. I think the on-screen prompts are going to recommend that you do over 100 RPM. I highly recommend trying to heed that advice if at all possible. It's only 30 seconds, but it's going to have that muscle sparing effect, taking some of the torque out of the legs. You're already working anaerobically, but if you can spare some of the fast twitch muscle fibers just a little bit by trying to use a little bit more contraction rate, it might help you as you get later on into the workout. So even if you start at 105 and you drop off to 95, it might be a little bit better for that heaviness in the legs and that burning than trying to go from 75 to 65 or 85 to 75. Just something to kind of look at there. When it comes to the recovery valleys, you're gonna get those nice five minute recoveries between the sets. Try to, towards the last several minutes after you've fully recovered your heart rate, spin up those legs again. I mentioned that in the last video. If you can get some of that tension out of the legs before you move into the working set and have your cadence already high and ready to go, you might be a little bit better off and you'll probably be more apt to get through those intervals feeling a little bit more in control. And finally, I know it should go without saying, but that third and final set is going to be the toughest. Those 30 second anaerobic efforts, they don't seem like a ton of time, but they are enough to do some damage, bake some fatigue and some lactate into the system. You're working at a high percentage of your FTP. So you'll start to feel fatigued towards the end of this workout, especially if you haven't done this workout a ton, but hopefully you're a little bit more prepared for it with the last two workouts under your belt, a little bit more familiar with how that feels, maybe being able to mentally push through those a little bit better, but that's pretty much it. It's a very straightforward workout. It's a very effective workout. You know, hopefully the information I gave you about what the purpose of the workout is and how you can continue to progress moving forward as you exit the academy and you're looking to structured training beyond this point, that this stuff is going to help imbue you with the knowledge you need to reach your goals. But that's it for the workout series for the Zwift Academy here. Uh, getting to the home stretch here, right? There's a couple more deliverables left for some of you to get the academy done. Maybe you've got a final recovery ride to do or you have the finish line ride to do, but you're probably a couple rides away at this point from getting that uh, coveted paint scheme for the bike and having the full fit and finish of the Academy kit and everything like that. But I hope you guys are enjoying the Academy so far and I hope that you guys are getting value out of these videos. Let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. I'll do my best to engage with you guys more down there. If you did get any value out of this video, please hit the like button. It does really help out the video and the channel quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. See ya.